Hi guys, and welcome to The Family Fudge. Today, I'm going to share with you how to make simple DIY string art. String art is a craft that is really fun and super easy to make, even for beginning crafters like me. String art is quite trendy right now, and you can even find pre-made items at places like Hobby Lobby. But today, I'm going to show you how easy and inexpensive it is to make your own custom string art, so stay tuned. The first thing you're going to need is some wood. Now you can use scrap wood or craft wood, whatever you prefer. I'm using this piece that I found at Walmart. It is a 12 by 16 inch piece of wood and it was less than $5. Next, you're gonna to want to prepare your wood. For me, I'm just gonna go ahead and take the sticker off, but if your wood's really rough, you definitely wanna give it a good sanding before you start. And this piece of wood actually comes with a hanger as well. The next step is to either paint or stain your wood. Now, I've decided to stain my wood with a walnut finish. So I'm just gonna take an old rag, dip it in my stain, using my gloves to protect my hand, I'm just going to rub the stain all over the front and the side and the back of my wood. Now just as a side note you guys, this craft wood actually has some holes in it. It's like a slatted piece, which actually isn't the easiest to make string art, but it will work. If you can find a solid piece of wood, it'll definitely be easier to make string art. When your paint or your stain is nice and dry, then you're ready for the next step, and that is to choose the art or your pattern that you want to use. If you do a search on Pinterest, you can actually find a lot of free printable patterns to make string art. So once you've chosen the pattern that you want to use, go ahead and print it out. Make sure it's going to fit on your piece of wood, and then it's going to be centered and all of that. Now my piece of wood was a little bit more challenging because of the open slats here between the pieces. So I went ahead and drew some lines so that I would know where not to put my holes. But if you're using a solid piece of wood, you don't need to worry about that. Next, I'm going to secure my pattern with a little bit of washi tape. The washi tape is excellent because it's not gonna damage the wood or stick to it too much. It's just gonna keep our pattern in place while we're hammering our nails. For this project, you also need a hammer, and if you'd like to, you can also use a set of pliers to help hold your nails while you hammer them. And of course, you're going to need a lot of small nails. I like the wire nails that are 18 by 3 quarters inch. I'm also going to be using a magnet to keep my nails right where I need them and to keep them from rolling all over the place. You also need some embroidery floss. You can use any color you prefer. I get mine from Walmart and it's only 44 cents each. I like to place the tip of my nail on the line of my pattern and then hammer the nail into the board. I only give the nail a few light taps with the hammer, just enough to make the nail hold firmly in place. You definitely want to make sure that your nail is not too loose, but you want enough sticking out so that it can keep hold of your embroidery floss. Now you're going to want to space your nails out as evenly as possible, but you still want to follow the lines of your pattern as closely as you can. Another tip is to make sure that all of your nails are at about the same height. So you don't have one nail that's sticking up really tall and one that's almost all the way into the board. That's not good. Now, if any of your nails end up a little bit crooked or not quite in the right spot, don't worry. You can go ahead and take it out and try again. Or you can use your pliers to try to straighten it out. Now, one of the things that I really like about this art project is that it's supposed to look rustic and handmade. So don't worry if it's not perfect. Once all of your nails are in, make sure they're nice and secure because next we're going to remove the paper. And if your nails are not nice and secure, they might pop out at this point. Now, if they do, it's not a big deal. You can go ahead and pop it right back in. 
Just hammer it right in the spot that it came out of. Now at this point, it may be a little bit hard to tell what your pattern is, so I'd like to keep an extra copy next to me while I'm working, just to use as a reference. And now we're ready for our embroidery floss. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the end of my floss, and it really doesn't matter where you start, just pick a nail, and you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and tie the first one onto the nail. Use a double knot to keep it into place. The next step is to start wrapping your string around your nails. It is important to hold your string with a tight tension. This will help the string stay wrapped around the nail as you move to wrap the next nail. It is really frustrating if you're not holding it tight enough and it all unravels. I use my fingernails to push the string under the nail head. That way the string will stay on the nail better. Now you can choose to wrap this around any way you'd like. You can do it nice and tidy or you can kind of do it all haphazardly and freeformed. It's up to you. And the more times you go around your nails, the darker your pattern is going to be. I like to go around my pattern probably three or four times. That way my design is really bold and stands out nicely against the stained wood. Now when your design is where you want it to be, all you have to do is snip off the end and double knot it. And now I'm just going to repeat the process on my other arrow, but this time I'm going to use white embroidery floss instead. So again, I'm going to start by securing my knot at the end. And then one of the big tips that I have here is to go section by section. It's much easier if you're not having to create a bunch of knots and break your string. So you wanna to try to continue your strand for as long as you can. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my heart section and go ahead and complete that before I move on to the rest of my arrow. So once I have my heart nice and thick, where I want it, then I'll move on to the arrow part. And I'm gonna go back over that until I have that at its desired thickness, and then I'll move on to the end of my arrow. Now at this part, I kind of forgot how the arrow was supposed to go, so luckily I had my picture there for reference. Now one of my big pet peeves about this project is that the end of my embroidery floss kept getting all tangled up. So if you have a remedy for this, let me know in the comments down below. So now that I've reached the end of this arrow, I'm gonna go ahead and secure the end of my embroidery floss by putting a double knot around my last nail. Keep it nice and tight and snip off the excess. Now, another fun option for string art, other than shapes, are letters. You could spell out inspirational words or names would be really cute. This hello sign was inspired by one that I noticed at Hobby Lobby. Now, the process for making letters with string art is pretty much the same with just a few changes. So I'll go ahead and share with you what I learned when I was making this hello sign. Number one, it's definitely easier if you choose a wider font. If you have small, delicate letters, it's gonna be a lot more challenging because I'm actually gonna be placing nails around the outside of the letter and the inside. So the inside loop of the L and the inside loop of the E and things like that. I also learned that it would be easier to start on the inside of your letter and you work your way out. Now, I didn't do that with this project. I started on the perimeter, and then when it came time to hammer inside my E, the space was really tight and it was kind of challenging. I still made it work, but I think the other way would have been easier. Okay, friends, thank you so much for joining me today. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more DIY projects. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.